Happy Wednesday, everybody. Andy and Steve from wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. Welcome to the Road to Millions. We're going to be breaking down NBA props, NHL props. we got our sneaky play of the day, stat of the day. And we're going back to the NFL for a nominee for the Unbreakable Sports Record Hall of Fame. We do this every Wednesday. So need everyone to hit the like button and uh, leave us a comment. Tell us how your night went. Tell us what's going good. You know, we need our positive vibes. That's how we start off every show. Not a ton of comments on uh, on yesterday's show. So, um, uh, Bjorn, yeah, uh, had a darts play. Best form of all players, crushing their opponents. Absolutely. Um, uh, Logan Evans has turned his NFL season around. That was awesome. Uh, good for you, Logan. Um, Neil had a future on Justin Steele, Cy Young, a winner. There's a blast from the past. What odds? I believe we talked about eleven to one on the show. I believe it was when you first. Yeah, brought yeah, it up. yeah. I think it might have even been thirteen to one potentially. I'm yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, NHL play. How do I grab? Well, we posted the grab the NHL play. That hit now six and zero. Oh. So uh, we did great in NBA, did great in NHL, stumbled in women's college basketball. Uh, is Steven – Steven. I have never heard anyone <laughs> refer to you as Steven. <laughs> it is my technically full name, but I've is always it really? gone by Steve. Yeah, it's technically is my full name. Okay. And I'm the second. I'm the second as well. Oh, no kidding. How about yeah. that? You learn, you learn something <laughs> new every day. Is Steven not helping you with picking the college football uh, I listen. We we collaborate. We we talk. It's not like we're not divorced, guys. Yeah, we're Clearly. still working together. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, we will still we we still talk about all that. Um, big day on Wednesday. So, uh, we're doing uh, customer appreciation day, and so uh, we get to pit, put put up one bet that's five dollars. So. It's you wouldn't see a soccer bet normally from us on a Wednesday, but European qualifiers are in the middle of the week this week. So um, grab that bet. That's normally a twenty five dollar bet. This is our biggest soccer bet since March. I went back and looked and you can get it for five dollars. So you're getting twenty five dollars off. That's a fifth of the price. Corbin has been on fire in soccer. Eleven and three run. He's number one in ROI and winning percentage the last 30 days. So it's really, really uh, a good time. Um, we're also going to run a flash special promo code, Andy 1000. Uh, we're doing the year pass. It's normally $2,000. Get it for $999 half price. Um, yeah. $2,000 value. Get it for 999. And then, uh, but really for today, if you're looking for one play, get that soccer play. Um, uh, really looking forward to it. Steve, you got a, a play up at sports memo. Yeah, I have um, a $5. It's a, it's a plus money NBA selection that I have over at uh, Sports Memo. I also have an NHL play available on the site today. Uh, but my $5 play is a, an NBA play that I that I fell in love with today. Nice. Let's move to NBA uh, real quick. My sneaky play of the day. Let's take Giannis under this rebounds and assists. It's 15 and a half. I actually brought this one up yesterday, and he went under. I think it comes down to the assists, really. Um, he's gone under in eight out of the last nine games. Last year, he was averaging 5.7 assists per game. This year, that's down to 3.6. I mean, that right there will will <laughs> will lower it below this number. And then last year, 11.8 rebounds per game. This year, 9.8. He's not getting it done in this category. Now, Steve, this is a guy that just scored 54, 35, and 35 mm -hmm. points. <laughs> so maybe he's just tired <laughs> of scoring. <laughs> So, yeah, right. Seriously. Uh, you, do you know my one concern with this one is because he's scoring so much. I wonder if there's there's going to be a game where he's like, I'm sick of scoring. I'm passing. Like, I was just going to say that that's the one question, right? Is he, is he kind of just like, is he scored so much recently that he's just going to be a little bit more share the ball a little bit more than usual tonight? I'm just going to keep riding the trend. I mean, this is a Bucks team. They're like bottom three in assists per game. It's ISO ball. Um and and yeah, when you yeah when you're putting up 54 points, not a lot of assists. When you're putting up 35 points, not a lot of assists are, are coming your way because when you get the ball, you're shooting it. So um, sneaky play today, we'll do that. And he's playing Toronto, who do a good job against him. They're, they're like a thorn in his side. So um, I was gonna say that they, I think I remember them. They they do a really good job against him in the past. Yeah. So uh, Steve, your stat of the day. We're going to Thursday night football. And we're talking about the Bengals, right? 
Yeah, the, the Bengals are 15-5 uh, and five ATS in their last 20 games as an underdog, if you include the postseason. And that includes um, going 10-1 and one when they're favored by three points or, or more during that stretch. And on uh, Thursday Night Football, they're, um, they're four-point underdogs against the Ravens. Wow. Who okay. you got? Who you like? I like the, I like the, the Bengals. I, I, I like riding the trend of the Ravens just absolutely crushing the NFC opponents. And then they just don't get – they don't – dominate against teams that have seen them before they just lost to the browns like yeah <laughs> like and this is coming off them cr- crushing seattle and killing detroit and and just crushing arizona this is also a team that lost to the steelers <laughs> the ravens so they, if you've seen them before in the afc you can somewhat game plan for them it's those nfc teams that have nobody on their squad or on their practice squad who can replicate Lamar Jackson. I really truly believe that's what it comes down to is they play these NFC teams and before they know it, they're down 20, nothing because Lamar just, you know, ripped off some long passes or or surprised him. So I, I think, I think the Baltimore is you bet on them when they're playing against NFC and you bet, uh, you bet on them when they're playing the NFC and you bet against them, the spread when they're going, uh, when they're, when they're going to AFC, that's my opinion. So. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, I I lean the I lean towards the Bengals with the points as well. I mean, the, just this is a game they really need to win. If you look at that division, it's just a total logjam. But yeah. you know they're at the bottom of it, and if they if they lose this one, they're going to be in a tough spot. So this is a a critical game for them. And I feel like with it being on a short week, that they'll have enough up you know enough of their sleeve to at least keep it close, and um you know just stay within a field goal at least and cash this one. Let's move on to some NBA and NHL. We've got some games to take advantage of. So you want to start in the NBA, Steve? What do you like in this one? Yeah, I'm looking at um, Bancaro again over uh, four and a half assists. He, oh, you know, Bancaro. last night. Yeah, even though, see, here's the thing is last night he, he fell short with only three. But if you look at it, he had um, he had nine potential assists in that game. So a couple of spots where – you know, his teammates just hit a couple extra shots and he would have gotten the job done. And then the opponent is right. The Bulls, they, you know, they've they've allowed the third most assists this season with 28. And you can get this one at plus money right now. So I would I would just count on his teammates hitting some extra shots because he generally does average that many potential assists per game. I was so excited to try and get DeMar DeRozan props. And now he's out. His home road uh, splits are ridiculous. I mean, they're almost was, laughable at this point. I was looking in the same direction, and and I mean, uh, my play tonight in the NBA for my five dollar play kind of is along the same trend, uh, like diff- different category and stuff, but kind of along the same thinking. But yeah, DeRozan, I was really excited to to go after him for his under um, for assists tonight at home. That's just been you know like 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 clockwork. You know, he's he's just going under at home. He's going over on the road. And, um, yeah, and Kobe White's involved now, so he's getting some extra assists too. So if they would have put the right number out and he would have been playing, but he's out, unfortunately, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I was looking at points. Talked about him about how he just – it's it's like 24-plus points at home, 18 on the road. And so the books just put the average. They put his average points up. That's his, like, point total. So it's like, oh, man, you can just take this guy over at home and under on the road, just, like, rinse and repeat. So – um, bummer on that one. Uh, real, real, real bummer on that one. So, um, I was looking at points, rebounds and assists. I've been loving taking these unders here and, uh, look who is not getting over his total Kyrie only gone over one time. And that was the monster game, um, against, uh, against Brooklyn. He's playing Washington. Uh, I guess it could be a, it, I guess it could be a potential score fest, but Washington has actually been involved in like a low, they, they were involved in a low scoring game here. I don't know. It just seems like there's Kyrie's just not quite getting it done. Luca just eats up so many of the stats that there's only a little bit left for Kyrie and he's been doing good in assists. Um, so it's almost like it's taken away from a few made baskets. So his point total is a little bit low. So I don't know. There was some. I thought there was something uh, that might be might be there with Kyrie. And then I was getting ready to jump on Levine and White before I realized uh, DeRozan was out. Yeah. I almost got I almost got caught uh, in that one. Um, so, was there anything else you liked in NBA today? Really? Yeah. 
Go ahead. I got one more. I'm looking at um I'm looking at Tatum over 13 and a half uh, rebounds plus assists in this one against the Sixers. You know, he's he scores he, he his if you've watched the trends, he he goes under points against the Sixers a lot. And in these categories, he's generally um, he's went over in seven of his last 10 games against them. And he's averaged 11.2 rebounds, 5.3 assists in those last 10 games against the, against Philadelphia. It seems like in the games against them, he generally kind of takes the, the backseat on the scoring and does a little bit more of the helping stuff. And, you know, he's, he's, you know, he can easily grab 10 rebounds tonight. So it wouldn't really leave much work for the assists to get the job done. All right. Other than that, on player props, there wasn't a whole lot. Um, I've got a, a cross sport parlay I'll be putting up that's got an assist uh, alt line in it. Um, there was, if I could, team total that I really like. Um, it is Toronto, and it just went down. To, it was one twelve and a half. It's now one eleven and a half with yeah, minus one twenty five. A little bit of juice. Playing against this Milwaukee Bucks team that's just terrible on defense. Um, like Giannis has been putting, you know, using so much energy on offense, and this team is bottom six in defensive efficiency. They give up a ton of points per game. And the Raptors, I think you're getting a great price because they came off a game against Washington where they didn't get over this total or they barely did, but they shot four of 20 from threes, like just a horrible shooting night. And then before that, they had 97 points. That was against Boston, an elite, like, like defense. So, yeah. feel like two games in a row with very explainable performances why they went under. And I just don't see them going going uh, under this total against Milwaukee, who gives out, you know, gives up points, you know, like it's nothing. So, um, I've been doing good on these team totals. So, we, it, I had the Pacers team total last night sailed over. On that one against uh, the 76ers. So I, I really like this 111 and a half against Milwaukee. Any competent offensive team should get to, should get to 112 against that Milwaukee team. So Yeah, for sure. Uh, NHL. Uh, there's a couple looks in this one. I'll start with you. What were you looking at with NHL? So I got I'm looking at Brock Besser, uh, over two and a half shots on goal. I've been doing really good with the um shots on goal as long as I keep them at two and a half or less say if it, it, when it gets a three and a half it kind of gets a little a little tricky but um so he's went over in in four of his last six games overall and he's went over in nine of his last 10 home games uh it's the perfect opponent tonight that's the real that's the real reason i love this one is the islanders are just giving up tons of shots the second most shots allowed per game and the fifth most to his position fifth most shots allowed to right wingers so, um, yeah, I think Besser over two and a half shots at this price is a, is a great play. I mean, the Islanders are struggling bad. Yeah. They are on a massive losing streak and a slump. Uh, my official play last night was, I mean, it went back to TJ Oshie to not have a point. They won 3-0. He didn't have another point. So I am going to continue to keep looking at these guys to not have a point. And you mentioned it. You want to talk about a parlay piece. Let's just fade this Islanders team. You and I are on the same page on this one. Anders Lee, it's minus 190 to not have a point. He's, I mean, he has one. <laughs> so, and that was against Colorado uh, to start. I mean, look at some of these teams. He played Edmonton, who was terrible, didn't have a point. Terrible on defense. Washington, not a good team. Didn't have a point. Minnesota, they're an over team. Didn't have a point. Carolina's an over team this year. Didn't have a point. And now he's playing Vancouver, fourth in goals allowed. And this Vancouver team is on fire. The Islanders are not. So if you're looking for some kind of parlay piece, to me, this is it. It's Oshie was only minus 150 yesterday, so this one is minus 190. So I think you have to put something with it, but... There are a ton of things that you could absolutely put with it. Um, so I wouldn't be, I would not be scared at all to take some of these back. And this has been, we're six and zero in NHL, and all six of them have been on guys to not have a point. This is a really, really nice category um, that we've been unlocking. You just look at these teams that are struggling, going up against good defensive teams, and and uh, yeah, it's there. So anything else in hockey? Well, it's kind of funny because 
he he Anders Lee was on not to have a point was on my list as well. I just didn't bring him up first because of the juice and like yeah. you said, it's a perfect part of Lee piece, but and we've talked about him before on the show. But and we haven't we didn't talk about him between each other earlier. So anytime that we both independently come up with a play that we both like, generally those plays high percentage of those hits. So I think that Anders Lee you're, you're on the right track with that one for sure. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it's really bad. He's not even on. He's not on the first power play line. He's on the second. So it's yeah. like it's like okay. Not only would he have to have, would they have to be on the power play? He'd have to get some minutes there. So uh, all, all things point against Anders Lee. By the way, if you're taking guys to not have a point, that's one of the things I'm looking at is looking at the power play lines and also what happens at the end of games. Um, so. Yeah, all right. That is going to do it for NBA and NHL. Uh, I guess if you want to, I, I, I guess if we want to give them something, is there something parlay wise to put with Anders Lee that you would recommend tonight? Hmm. I don't want to. I don't. I don't. Wanna, I don't, wanna, I don't want to give out a minus one ninety and then say like, oh yeah, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, find your own parlay piece, right? Fine. Fine. Thanks for joining. Find your own. Uh, could I throw out Luca over five and a half assists against Washington? That would probably be a good one. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty high pace game. You got to figure. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, um, yeah, it's I don't know, little cl- little clunky, but I I I feel bad saying, hey, here's this minus one ninety. Knock yourself out. <laughs> for yeah, I just it. don't have. I just yeah, I, I didn't have. I don't have anything to pair with it right this second though. Okay. Well, if I come up with something, I can put it in the comment section or something like that. There you go. Leave us a comment for your best. For yeah, help us complete that parlay. Help us complete yeah. the half-assed play that I just gave out. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. Hit the like button. <laughs> so, uh, all right, guys. Just a quick reminder. Um, running a couple promos. It's customer appreciation day. Uh, first off, if you want a long-term pass, uh, we got that promo code available. Andy one thousand. Year pass, it's normally $2,000. Today, half price, $999. So you're getting half price on 365 days worth of plays. Uh, really happy with where we're at. Steve, we're in the dreaded number four spot for units gained in 2023 in the year. The only, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the first non recognition spot, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, wow, you're top three. You don't exist. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's basically where it is. So uh, it's a cruel, cruel world. But uh, for $5 play today, this is normally a $25 bet. It's a soccer bet. It's the biggest one we've had since March. Grab that. It's one-fifth of the price today and today only. On an 11-3 and three run, number one in winning percentage in soccer last 30 days, number one in ROI. ROI. So seeing it really, really well. So go ahead and grab that. And uh, Steve, one more time, what do you have up at Sports Memo? Yeah, I have a $5 NBA selection. It's plus money, and um, we're up over 60 units on um, all sports on the season. And I also have an NHL play available for normal price. But uh, grab that NBA one, guys, because I love the play, and it's a plus money play as well. All right. Let us go into the sports record, Hall of Fame of Unbreakable Records. And, guys, uh, leave us a comment if you want us to break down one of these um anyway we've got a couple good ones uh that we have kind of shelved but it is football season so we went back and forth and we ended up on unbreakable sports record hall of fame nominee randy moss 23 touchdown catches in one season steve you were very familiar with this right yeah for sure and just a quick story i'll never forget this one because so our fantasy draft that year me and my buddies get together and Uh, We had some, you know, most of the guys come back to the league every year, you know, but we had some new guys. And one of the new guys that year, uh, my buddy, Matt. Now, so if you remember this, he Moss wasn't he wasn't very he wasn't like a first round draft pick this year, because if you remember, this is that after he had had these poor seasons with the Raiders actually even had on the Raiders. Yeah, this is like Devontae Adams all over. This is Devontae Adams like back when. Yeah, so he he was like, you know, even in his last season in Minnesota, it was his worst season even over there. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like an all-time low point for Randy Moss. And I'm sitting there, you know, I got – yeah, he's kind of like projected to be like a fourth-round guy. So I'm like, "Ah, I'm going to snag him, you know, maybe late third, early fourth and make a a nice move here. He he could be a sneaky guy with with Brady and stuff. My buddy Matt, first-round pick, bang, Randy Moss. 
jaws drop. Everybody at everybody at the draft is just like, "What are you doing?" Like, you know, it's his first draft. They're like, he's not projected to go to the fourth round. He's just going, "Oh, uh, yeah, I expect him to do." You know, I expect him to do really good. He's going to have a huge year. Comes back right back around and grabs Brady. And Brady oh was gosh. also was also you know he was he was someone you would grab in like the, you know later in the third round maybe or something at the time you know what I mean so he makes these two selections and everyone's kind of like a lot of Patriots fans at the draft obviously you know that we we have fans from everywhere but Dallas fans uh, Giant fans stuff like that but yeah everyone's giving him a hard time and he and he won the league that year and absolutely. it was yeah, you know, oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely he did oh that's well, amazing. Sure. <laughs> I guess yeah. it showed you he had, he had the you know he had the guts to make the pick. So yeah, I I, I have I have little memories of Jerry Rice. Um, and like one of the one of the funny things about you know that Randy Boss Tom Brady connection is when you talk about like best quarterback to wide receiver combos, <laughs> Jerry Jerry Rice is in like two of them. It's like yeah, Joe right. Montana and Jerry Rice. Well, what's another one? Steve Young yeah. and Jerry Rice. So that season though, oh man, you couldn't stop him. You could not stop Randy Moss and Tom Brady that year. So the question is, is this record unbreakable? 23 touchdown catches in one season. So Jerry Rice, the aforementioned Jerry Rice, second with 22. Uh, Gronkowski is closest since Moss. He had 17. Um, that's uh, – and then Tyree Kill. He's the touchdown leader – this year, and he only has eight through nine games. So, Steve, walk us through. What's your thought process here? So, what I'm thinking here is that it's – you think first thing first, that you have the extra game. You know, so that's that's an added factor that, that you know, Moss didn't play 17 games. So, we have, you know, a 17-game regular season. Um, the reason why it wouldn't happen is it seems like there's, like, you know, there's a lot of double coverage now on the, on these big wide receivers when it comes to being in the red zone. They're able to – teams used to key in more on the running backs on, on the running game, but now it's – you know, they're keying in on that top option on the receiver. So it makes it a little bit harder for a guy to, to get – to stack up that many, you know, that many touchdowns in one season. And you had mentioned Hill. You know, he leads the league with eight right now after nine games. So he's more than halfway there. You know, he's probably, you know, projected for 15 or so, right? So – and that's going to fall way short. But I still think, though, that I don't know that it makes the Hall of Fame just because I could see a receiver coming through and having that year, you know, a, a Jefferson or something like that, where they really just, you know, blow the doors off and, and, and can and maybe can reach that number. Uh, first off, sorry, it's 2011, not two th- the, the two button is right next to the one on the keyboard, if you didn't realize that. And I just read it like it was nothing. So that is my fault. <laughs> Brian Gronkowski Gron- did not catch 17 touchdowns in 2022. He, Sorry about that. He teases that. coming. He teases coming back. It's all right. <laughs> um, is it impressive? Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. Does it make my jaw drop? No. And I think that's that's kind of where I get. Like, the ones that have made it into the Hall of Fame make my jaw drop. Like, if we want to take a look at who's made it, Henderson, the stolen bases, you're just like, No shot. Emmett Smith, no shot. Gretzky, like you said, Gretzky had to be broken up in two categories for fantasy league. (laughs) One goals, one's a sit. Cal Ripken, no way. Cy Young, no way. What's the recipe for Randy Moss? uh, Or what's the recipe for for something like this? I think it's something that's replicable. Like, I'm not saying it could happen to someone like, like Devontae Adams, but what a similar recipe. You have a guy that's like the best receiver in the league who's on a team where he's really unhappy. He gets signed to a contract that he's worth less or he's worth a lot more than what they pay him. And all of a sudden you have this unbelievable, like, like, like stud, like how many touchdown passes would Devonte Adams catch right now? If he signed a bare minimum contract with the chiefs, just th- think about that. Yeah. Think about if, Devontae was like, I'm out of here. Something weird happens. The Chiefs sign him, and now all of a sudden you got Devontae Adams and Travis Kelsey on the same team. Like, how is how do you defend that? Like, Yeah, I guess Kelsey, I guess countering that, that would be, you know, with Kelsey on the team, it would take away, you know, maybe it would be a situation. Yeah, it, it, then if then they could key in on him more, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, if he was on the Chiefs, though, he would be pretty much unstoppable, right? I mean, yeah, and I don't know if this is an argument for or against this record, but college is just like they're pumping out these wide receivers that are insane. Like Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a stud immediately. Like from day one, he's going to be a stud. And you look at guys like Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And so I think these guys that are coming out of college ready to go, they're just so much more advanced than in years past. So you have someone like Jamar Chase who can get pretty close if he's the only guy there in Cincinnati. So what if, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. gets drafted to some, you know, and, and hits it off with his quarterback and he's on a minimum contract and it's like, so I, I don't know. It's not, it's not knock me out of my chair. This record is so as impressive as it is, I don't know, Steve. I can't get there. I can't put it in unbreakable. I think it's breakable. Yeah, I'm with you. It's it's a it's an impressive number, and and no one's come close to it in a while. But I do think that I I do I don't if you when you the thing is when you sit it with on the other side of those ones that you just laid out, those other ones are just 100. percent They they can't be broken. This yeah. one, it could happen, especially now you have a 17 game season. It would only take you know a little over a touchdown a game. Yeah. All right. So shout out to Randy Moss. Insane career, insane record. Unfortunately, it comes up just short of making it into the unbreakable sports record Hall of Fame. And shout out to Gronk for that epic 2022 season. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so. All right, 17, by, 17 by him in 2011, though. That's impressive, too. You know, it just shows... Just goes to show only you how great Brady away. was. I mean, only one ever from a tight end. Game from a yeah. tight end. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, guys, take advantage of those plays on Wednesday. Uh, we got five dollars special plays up. Uh, so, thanks everyone for joining us. Be back tomorrow for Team Total Thursday. Get ready for that. So, take advantage of all those plays. Leave us a comment, please. Tell us your positive vibes, how things are going, and we'll see everyone tomorrow on the Road to Millions. Thanks, guys.